Welcome to the UK Travel Planning Podcast. Your host is the founder of the UK Travel Planning website, Tracy Collins. In this podcast, Tracy shares destination guides, travel tips, and itinerary ideas, as well as interviews with a variety of guests who share their knowledge and experience of UK travel to help you plan your perfect UK vacation. Join us as we explore the UK from cosmopolitan cities to quaint villages, from historic castles to beautiful islands, and from the picturesque countryside to seaside towns. Hi, everybody, and welcome to episode 83 of the UK Travel Planning Podcast. Yes, I cannot believe it. This is episode 83. It's nearly two years since we started the podcast. So thanks to all of you for tuning in and listening every week. So in this episode, I will just say I'm actually recording this in Wales, where it's a beautiful view out the window, but it is pouring down with rain, as Doug and I are house-sitting at the moment. Um, But this episode is about getting from London airports into London itself, because we know we get asked all the time, I'm going to arrive at Heathrow, I'm going to arrive at Gatwick, and I need to get to my hotel. So how do I do that? Which is the easiest way to do it? Now, there are lots of different options, and we talk about those on the website, but I don't know about you, but I've got to the point in my life where I just want the easiest option when I've arrived after a long flight. I'm tired, I'm disorientated. If it's a brand new place that I've never been to before, what do you want? You want to be met and picked up and whisked to your hotel. So that is why we at UK Travel Fund have partnered with Riz from X for Cars to provide this service for you. So this podcast, we have got Riz. So hi, Riz. Hi, everyone. Hi, Tracy. Thank you for having me. So Riz, I've invited you on to the podcast this week to basically chat about the service that you offer and for all the details about why people should book a transfer, what the benefit of it is, and actually what it is that you know your company offers people to get from the airport to their hotel and actually all around the UK because you actually do transfers all over as well. But I thought we would have a chat today about why it is that we work with you guys and what's so special about the service. So would you like to introduce yourself and share a little bit about your background, Riz? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. So um, so I pride myself pretty much in customer experience or customer journey. I've got nine years in retail. Uh, The foundations were built with Enterprise Rental Club which is where I picked up, you know, their, their vision was not just meet customer expectations, but exceed them. And that kind of stuck with me. And in terms of my career path, that led me more you know, deeper into customer service. So I was with Vodafone, which the American customers may be familiar with Verizon. So it was a big sort of share with them. Um, and again, I was leading customer experience, customer journey. So customer service has been close to my heart from a very, very long time. Inevitably, even, you know, even now, I'm contracting as a business analyst and a hybrid project manager. And again, that's all around customer journey. So um, lo and behold, when I think of my own experiences traveling, as, as you correctly said, and you pointed out, you know, after a long journey, I think what you want is a stress-free experience where all the trouble is taken away from you. You've put a really valid point there, Riz, and it's something that, well, we've been traveling, certainly in the last few years, you know, I... I just want to have that VIP experience. I want somebody, when I walk through with my name on a board, will take my luggage, will take me to the car, and will whisk me to my hotel. And I I don't want any hassle. I just want to be able to know that once I get off the plane, I don't have to stress. I'm a bit of a stressy person, which people find really funny considering what I do, but I like to be organized I like to know, I mean, Doug and I have just come from a, you know, three months traveling all around Asia. And every time we've, we had, I don't know, six flights, but every time we were met at the airport and taken to our hotel. And yes, it may cost a little bit more, but you know, you're already spending quite a lot for your vacation anyway. So having that investment when you arrive to have a smooth, smooth transition from the airport to your hotel, I, I just don't think it can be. I don't think it's actually valued enough, but I think... It you know it really does and can make a huge difference to the, the start of your holiday. Really, I couldn't agree more. I think it's a different take for different people in terms of where you see the beginning of your holiday. For me personally, it's the moment I touch down because obviously it might be the moment they check in at the other side, and, and I don't think there's anything more reassuring than getting a, a greeting or a hello or a welcome, you know, from the company that's supposed to pick you up or the person you've trusted to be responsible for taking care of you from that moment on just to get you to your your hotel or wherever you you know you, you wanted to go 
and, and like you said earlier, it's it's different for everybody. Um, we, you know, it, I don't want to say you get what you know you get what you pay for, but what I do want to say is, is yeah, the elephant in the room for me would be is, and I hear it all the time, Uber is cheaper. And I think um, I do want to actually call that one. I say, yeah, Uber might be cheaper, and and they probably are cheaper in a lot of cases. But but then we're not comparing apples for apples. Um, there are two complete different services. I'm not competing with Uber. I am you know dealing with professional people who are there who will give, greet you with a smile, who will be there with presentable cars as well as themselves. They will communicate with you. They don't leave the stress to you, including myself. And I'm sure some of the customers that have worked with me in the past already will probably vouch for the fact that. London doesn't sleep and neither do I. So, you know, you could email me, call me, message me, whatever time of day or night, and you'll get a response. That's number one thing guaranteed for me. So you wouldn't ever be left sort of wondering, you know, what's happening next. And I don't just do that for the customers. Uh, I take pride in what I do. I take pride in the service that I'm trying to deliver. And actually that for me begins, even if you've got a five o'clock pickup, I can assure you at 3.30, I'm speaking to the driver to make sure he's there. And if he's not there, I've got a plan in place to make sure you will never know what actually happened in the background. So to make all that work, it does take a lot of hard work and commitment. And and which is why I say, you know, it's not just about Uber can do this for 50 quid and you want 96. Um, again, it's the fact that the Uber driver won't meet you at the terminal. They won't monitor your flights. They won't, you know, you, you'll order one. You don't know what car's going to turn up, whether your luggage is going to fit in now or not. And by the way, that's another point I wanted to speak about. But what I really want to bring home in terms of the message that I'm trying to deliver there is, is this isn't my call on what car you should have. This is really down to you because you have the advantage um, as a customer to know what you're bringing with you, what luggage, what sizes, what realistically you know it will fit into. I can only sort of base my judgment on the guidance and, and then expect the largest possible bag that may or may not fit. What I can't do is assume that you're going to bring the smallest to the medium-sized bag and it will all fit. And then quote you for a, a service and again, promise you the world at, at, the, at the front end and then really sort of ruin your holiday before it's even begun because we're now at the airport, you're tired and the car that's turned up isn't quite what you thought you were going to get or it's, you know, there's a misunderstanding in there. So, yeah, so I will put the figures out there for guidance. If you feel that, you know, the customer feel like actually I can do in a small car, I can adjust with so-and-so, by all means, please, um, at your discretion, you're very welcome to say, actually, I don't want the MPV, I want the smaller car. Would do it, and actually, to be honest with you, there's no harm in saying, you know, I've got a, a price in mind. This is what I'm thinking, because I work with lots of different drivers. Some drivers have different type of vehicles. Some obviously take pride in the car that they drive. Others probably don't. Um, they work more on the on the, the financial side of things, so they will just be practical A to B. And if that's what you're looking for, not a problem. I can do that as well. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm more than happy where where I've got additional sort of comments in the boxes. Please let me know if you've got quotes that you're comparing, if you've got a price in mind that you think is 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 more justifiable than what you've got on there. I'm happy to to try and work with that. I won't promise that I'm going to be uh, Uber. I probably won't, but I will try the closest I can. And having said all of that, these prices are well, they're, they're tracked almost on a daily basis. I'm checking with competitors as well. And and just on that note, actually, just probably worth mentioning as well. So. It's not just airport to hotel, it's also, you know, um, airport to beyond um, hotel, beyond London. So whatever journey you'd like, any bespoke plans you'd like, if you need the driver for the day, for a week, whatever you prefer, you tell me. And it's not even just down to, and again, I don't want to quote names, but I just had a, you know, recently there was a strike at the train station. I've got a last minute call saying, hey, we've got tickets to France, we can't get there. I've paid for a very expensive hotel. Can you help me? And believe it or not, I was on the phone literally within 20 minutes trying to make calls to get driver to drive in France. And I unfortunately couldn't do it immediately there and then because I was also about 150 miles away. And I said, actually, I can come later today myself. I'll be more than happy to. So this is what I mean by that specialist sort of bespoke service that's built around your needs as a, as a customer. So, yeah, I'll, I'll do wherever I can or wherever it takes to make sure that my experience is great for you. Not just at the point of seeing you before and after. Um, I'm fully committed to, to your, your experience. I think as well, um, Rose, you made some really, really important points that I think, uh, you know, people need to consider when they are booking. I think particularly the, the cars in the UK are smaller than perhaps you, you may be used to in, in Australia and North America. They are much smaller so that the boot space or trunk space is is not necessarily going to fit in all the luggage. And I think that is, is something really important to consider because I know in the past we have had comments where people have said, oh, you know, th there's five adults and we've got eight suitcases and three bags and we've got a cheaper 
quote, but actually potentially what you've got a quote for is one car that isn't going to fit all your luggage. So yes, you may be able to fit four adults in, in a car, but can you fit four adults plus the luggage in a car as well? So what actually might happen is they turn up to pick you up, can't fit you in. So you have to have a second car anyway, which doubles the amount that you had planned to pay. Um, and I think that's an important thing because you go into those details, don't you, Riz, with people? I mean, the form is designed to effectively ask anything that, you know, I could think that could become a, a blocker for, for that journey not being able to take place as, as planned. Um, and I think, yeah, you know, just, just to mention, actually, also, nowadays, not only do we get a smaller version of the car that you might get across the pond, but also with the hybrid cars and the plug-in hybrids, we get less boot space as well. So I try to be as generous as I can when I say those numbers. And, and I know it sounds shocking to say one large bag and two small bags. But again, you know, that's again a subjective, what is large bag to you and what is large bag to me. What I can't do is just say two large bags and then suddenly we, we, we're stuck. So so I think probably enough for me <laughs> said on, on the luggage side. I don't get anything out of, you know, misquoting anybody or telling you you need a bigger car when you don't. Uh, because actually, I'd rather not lose your business just because I've outpriced the, the quote that you were expecting. Um, but I'd rather be realistic, as you said earlier. I don't want to be there at the airport saying, right, let's order another car. And unfortunately, that's going to cost you. Because again, I think that's the last thing you probably want to hear when you've got already a mindset of you've you've landed and you're sort of, you know, visioning yourself in a hotel and not, you know, sitting in another car to arrive. If your flight is delayed, say, say half an hour, and it takes you a little bit longer to get out through through immigration and everything, collect your bags, go through immigration, all that sort of stuff that you've got to do. We know that some companies, if you will only wait a certain length of time before then they add charges on. So how long do you, do your guys wait? So I guess I, I don't believe in charging you for the job and then just disappearing because it's, you know, the time's up. So there's no time up, um, if, if I could sort of say that out loud. What I do mean by that is, is we believe and we work on reasonable sort of, you know, measures here. So we say, okay, we've looked at the flight monitoring. So we monitor your flight at no cost to you, um, even in the economy, even though you're not paying for that part of it. But we monitor in the sense that we make sure it is still arriving. Um, the difference, of course, is, is we keep an eye on it until we wait for you to let us know that you're ready to be picked up um, in terms of the economy and, and the prestige. But so you will never be left stranded not being picked up because, you know, your flight is delayed or has taken you longer. What we do try to do is make contact with you from the moment your your uh, flight lands. Um, and hopefully we're hoping that, you know, we can get through whether it's by phone, by message or however means that, that might be. I do request uh, customers to sign up onto the, the Heathrow Wi-Fi, which is available free of charge. And again, it just makes that ease of communication, which is why I request the phone number up front so that we can you know, interact as much as possible both before and after, after you landed. So what I do is I, sort of reasonably speaking, I give half an hour from the time the plane has landed and then I instruct the driver to go in and then I've, I've always, always paid the driver for at least one hour's worth of parking. So that gives us peace of mind of minimum half an hour to an hour and a half of the driver's time that they've committed to already. Now, if, and so far that hasn't happened, but if if there was a situation where we know we've just found out this is going to be a completely different uh, situation now, it's going to take a lot longer, I'm happy for that driver to either agree to wait longer, I will communicate with the driver. If they cannot, I'll, of course, you know, uh, re- rearrange another driver, which is my plan B. And again, that's part of why you're paying the price that you're paying. And again, my promise to you is you wouldn't be left stranded. You wouldn't be left, you know, because it's now been an hour and I've not seen you. The hours as a guide to say, listen, we'll easily happily wait. We're happy waiting an hour. We expect that. We anticipate that. I've had people come out in 15 minutes and then I've had somebody take an hour and a half. So it does vary depending on how much luggage you're carrying, what the queues are at the other side of in, in, in immigration, if you've got a biometric passport or not, all these things that are, are taken into consideration. Absolutely. I know I've landed at Heathrow and got through very quickly. It depends if you land and there's lots of other large flights coming in at the same time, it can be a bit hectic and take longer. So you've got all those factors in, but the thing is, if you know, if you know you guys are at the other side, you know that you can, you don't have to be panicked and worried and thinking, oh, that's my lift gone. I'm not. How am I going to get to my hotel? It's it, that stress is gone. And 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 actually, just just to add on to that, so um, you know, I've got people who are making the reservations for the arrival of the flight time, and then some are panicking, thinking I shouldn't put that time down because it's going to take me longer. In all honesty, the moment I have your flight number. Um, that's all I need. It gives me a guide to say, okay, the driver will be on standby looking at that flight. I will be monitoring it. 
I, I've had a, a customer very recently, again, I don't want to call him names, but thank you because you know who you are. And their flight was due to arrive at 9.20 a.m. Um, and then it was delayed till 8 p.m. And, and this is what I mean by, you know, I got an email at three in the morning because they were, you know, stranded at the airport because they couldn't fly on, on the, the, the planned day. And they said, you know, if you can make arrangements. And, and I was back in touch with them and we, we arranged for the drivers to be there. I was there. I met them myself, actually. So it's just those sort of things where we will go out of our way to make sure not just meet the expectations, but exceed them. I just want to also just say, because we we have had quite a few of the Facebook community members who have booked your service and we've had some wonderful feedback. So I'm actually just going to read a couple out. So this is going to make your head swell, Riz. But anyway, thanks for the recommendation, Tracy. Seven of us flew into London a few weeks ago from Australia after a very long flight. And believe me, I know it's how long that flight is. Uh, Riz and his colleagues were there to take us to accommodation. Riz was lovely and so helpful throughout the whole booking process. We are very happy with the service. Thanks, Riz and Tracy. That's from Vanessa. And then we have another one. Just want to say a huge thanks and give a very strong recommendation for Riz of Extra Cars for anyone's airport transfer needs. All was exactly as advertised and the peace of mind was absolute. Riz personally met us and picked us up right outside the exit from baggage at Heathrow and delivered us to the front of our hotel without any issues, despite a couple of rather large suitcases. We could did consider the Elizabeth line and then looked into a further car needed to take us from the end of the Elizabeth line to our hotel and decided the extra cost was very worthwhile and in the end more time efficient to book with Riz. So such a positive, friendly and informative experience. Nothing too much trouble. Thanks to this group and Tracy for putting us onto him. Five stars from this traveling couple. We've had, as I say, wonderful feedback, very professional, VIP, lovely service, somebody you can depend on, take that stress away when you land at the airport. So Riz, we ask this question to everybody at the end of the podcast, but what is your one tip for anybody arriving or traveling into London for the first time? Wow, um, I should be better prepared for this one. The one tip I'd say is, well, bring a jacket, first of all, and an umbrella. <laughs> so that's, that's my one tip, jacket and umbrella. Secondly, people are super friendly. And if you need anything, please do not hesitate to ask. People will, you'll, you'll find people will go out of the way to help you if they feel like, you know, they see that you're, you're you're obviously not quite at home. They will make sure that they are welcoming. And the same goes for me. Nothing is too much trouble. Um, very bespoke, whatever you need. Imagine you were there before you even arrived in London and you needed something done. If I'm available, give me a shout. I'd be more than happy to try and do whatever we can to make that work for you. So, yeah, don't forget your umbrellas uh, and your jackets, even though it might be sunny outside. Don't trust the UK weather. It's rather rainy at the moment, isn't it? We've had rather a lot of rain over the last uh, week or so, unfortunately. Thanks so much, Riz, for coming on to this week's episode of the podcast. We actually have an article which links to your website so people can actually book directly with you. But if you want to read a little bit more about Riz, there'll be the show notes for this episode and also links to our article. So go to uktravelplanet.com forward slash episode 83. For this week, I have to say it's been fantastic talking to you, Riz. So thanks so much for coming on. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy. Hopefully see you again soon. Oh, thanks again, Riz. All that leaves me to say is my usual tagline at the end of each podcast. Happy UK travel planning from me.